Bienvenue, euh, nous sommes ravis d'accueillir aujourd'hui Josh Smith pour sa quatrième exposition avec la galerie, troisième dans nos espaces, euh, une virtuelle, euh, et surtout sa première exposition à Paris depuis 2009. Donc, euh, merci Josh, thank you for being here, for giving us such a great show. And we're excited to hear you speak more about this body of work, so I'll hand it over to you. Okay. Excuse my English. Um, this was an experiment. Uh, the previous two shows were abstract shows, which were very colorful, to the point where I felt like I was abusing color and just using it. And my philosophy about being an artist is to go forward and change, not to beat the same drum for a whole lifetime. Uh, there's different types of artists, and that's the type of artist I am. I like to learn, and as a painter, I love the two-dimensional surface. It's a fair surface, like a, like a soccer, like a football field or something. We all, everybody competes on the same two-dimensional surface, or not competes, but says what they want to say. So I'm very fortunate to be able to paint, exhibit, and exhibit in such beautiful spaces and work with such wonderful people. Um, so for this exhibition, I, I built it, I, and the red came, the red tone of the show came from working in a church. I was working in a, in a, I started working on these paintings and I have a studio that's in an old church which had a red floor and subconsciously um, the red started seeping into my paintings and it made me uncomfortable so I, I, I like to feel uncomfortable. I feel like if I don't provoke myself uh, and push myself and push myself forward, then maybe I shouldn't be an artist anymore. Because if I'm not learning, it doesn't feel fruitful. So in the past, I've worked thematically, like I. As a younger artist, I started painting my name, which is a very simple American name. And then the abstract paintings grew out of kind of unwinding the name, so that take the J and the O and the S, and just, I disassembled the name, and an abstract, like something like this, or the abstract paintings grew out of that. And and for this exhibition, I drew from, somewhat from my past and somewhat from my present, and I hope somewhat from my future as an artist. And the red tone of the show allowed me to, to do that without feeling like my brain was uh, it just allowed my brain to settle down and focus on making one good painting after another. Each painting was made on an easel as opposed to just having a room full of paintings. I mean, I work on an easel, so I, I look at each painting and I try to make the best thing that I can that I don't understand. Um, the most I understand about my work is that when I look at it, I, I feel like a viewer, not the artist. I want to feel like I'm viewing my work like anybody would, because I'm the, I'm the first viewer. Like, I get to see the baby first. And, and, uh, uh, once again, I'm, I'm fortunate 
to have the opportunity to, to share my work with you and with other people. Um, so the, the varied subjects in the paintings, for instance, there's an abstract painting. I did a horse, I did a camouflage painting. Uh, I could talk a little bit about whichever painting. I mean, I can try to talk about it, but the horse, once there was a horse, a race horse, I guess here we call it a thoroughbred in America, but maybe it's a pure blood horse. Uh, a, a, a wealthy friend of mine had a race horse, which he named after me, and I made a painting of that horse. And, and here on the bridle, it said Josh Smith. So, I mean, this was the name of the horse. So I just painted a picture of, in my imagination, what the horse was, and I built the painting around that. The camouflage painting I saw from, a, I spent a time in a Warhol exhibition and, and uh, I realized that this is something I should try. Um, I love the pattern and I love the depth that, that camouflage creates. And I added the border to finish, just to finish it. A lot of times I add the border just to finish it. I need something to make me stop working on a painting and leave it, leave it be. Um, so sometimes I'll sign it or add the border. Um, and the paintings change quite a bit, like especially this painting. There's several paintings under each painting. Like if you imagine this painting like this, it, it was a jetliner, like an airplane. You can see the, the shape of the plane and the wing and the wings and the, the tail. It was like this. And I felt after looking at it, this has nothing to do with me. This doesn't. I wanted to paint a picture of a plane because I imagined that it would look good, but the reality was it doesn't have anything to do with me. So I turned it vertically and let it just flow into an abstract painting. Previously, I didn't. I've always avoided drips, the, the drips, because I thought it looked irresponsible. Um, but here I, I let it happen. I sat there and watched the painting cry and, and I enjoyed that. So that's a new thing I was able to do. And, and the way I work and maybe the reason my paintings, uh, the reason I like my paintings is because I don't, I don't seal them shut. I leave them open like a, so that the viewer can finish them and me being the viewer too. A, a, large, a lot of artists say they don't think about the viewer when they work, but I'm the viewer, <laughs> you know? So I, I do think about it. I do think about people looking at my work and I like to leave something a little unfinished. So it's not sealed closed. So it's not sealed closed. Uh, it is a statement, but it's not a closed statement. Like I want a person to be able to look at it and see how it was made. I don't like to make a sort of a, illusions and subconscious, uh, you know, surreal style um, painting. I like things, I like the idea that a person, any person, even not someone who's not an artist or a child or anybody can see how the painting was built. Like clearly I, I had a canvas and I had the paint and I used the two dimensional plane to make a, a image that, that gives, that gives 
enough for, for a person to build um, their own ideas or to just be, to, that it doesn't bother, doesn't bother a person that you can't, that you don't like it. If you don't like one of my paintings, you can just walk away from it. You don't have to walk away from it feeling that you don't understand it. It's only that you don't, it doesn't touch you. Uh, sometimes I look at a painting by somebody else and I'm frustrated because I know there's something that the person is trying to say, but I can't, it doesn't mix with my, with, with what I understand. And here I want to make my style of work, I want people to be able to see how the paintings are made and even to feel like I, that you could make the painting. Like, I don't want to intimidate the viewer. I just want the viewer to, to have a moment with my work and in the context of the show to, to be able to sit in an atmosphere so when I work, I think about the paintings and the exhibition and then the time after the exhibition when the painting goes back to being alone. So I hope that my work functions on three levels. So as I was working, different ideas came into my head and I tried to render them uh, and a lot of times they failed, and which I love failure, because without failure there's no success. And I think that painting is a, a healthy activity because nobody gets, and art, art is a healthy activity. Nobody gets hurt. It's, it's, a, it's a pure exchange of, uh, it's a, it's a simple exchange while we're, we're alive of one person to another person. So I always wanted to paint clowns uh, because it's a, I li a lot of times I deal with cliche, like I've done the palm trees and I've done the, the uh, my name or, uh, the Grim Reaper, the, uh, the image of de the death figure, which on the surface are simple ideas, which allows me to, to have a framework to, to kind of crawl into. So here I did the clowns and I, I looked at it for a month or two and then I, I didn't want to erase it, so I just added some, I distorted it and I added the stairs and left it. I like these, like their friends. The, this latter image goes way back, comes way back to when I was a student. I, before I started doing my name, I would just, in school, I was there to learn about how to be an artist, not to become an artist. So, how to make a canvas, how to mix paint and this and that. And rather than focusing on imagery, I've focused on the craft, learning the craft of making art. I studied primarily printmaking because it's technical. And I knew that school would be the main place where I could learn about that form of art. Painting is something that is analogous to everything, and it's probably the simplest art form. You have a white canvas and you can touch it a few times with a paintbrush and there you have a painting, if you're lucky. So this was a painting I painted and this image, before I painted my name, I would just paint this ladder and I used it again I've heard from several 
people this week that the ladder is a symbol of bad luck or this or that, but I don't mean it like that. I just mean it like an image. I love to paint New York City. I love the shape of New York City and, and the feeling. And this is the view from my print, where I make prints, where I make my, do my printmaking. They have a window and this is the uh, Queensboro Bridge, the 59th Street Bridge. And, and I, it, it grew out of the paintings I made during the pandemic. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but while the pandemic happened, everybody disappeared and I could see my neighborhood and the city like a, for the first time, uh, as a sculpture sort of, or it was empty and I would walk around and everything became crystal clear and I was able to make these, I felt I was able to paint like a child or like a, a younger person and I felt entirely free. So uh, that's something I wanna continue to do, but I, I never paint horizontally and I also wanted to try to make a horizontal painting and the bridge was a good subject to do that. And from New York, a lot of paintings are vertical in New York because the spaces are long and tall. So a lot of paintings made in New York have a vertical format. And so naturally I've learned how to paint like that and as simple as it is, this is a challenge. Also in New York, there's not a lot of space, much like here. And so a vertical painting doesn't take up as much space as a horizontal painting. And the vertical painting also uh, mimics us, the shape of us. So we can walk into it like a, look at it. It, 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 it resembles the shape of us. And you don't have to look left or right. You can just look at this thing and think or just walk away, you know. Um, each painting I tried to make different. I, I intend that was my, that was my goal for this show was to try to make a, uh, a variety of different images. So here's another abstract painting with the um, with the shame sort of drips, and this looks like a big a big thumb to me, like a and and I I I I left it I left it like this. This is another abstract painting that kind of seemed like an octopus or an insect. And I turned it upside down and worked on it some more to make it more of an open-ended painting. I've, I like the idea of mixing the, some abstraction with some representational painting. As an artist, I feel like I could paint pretty much anything, maybe not people so well. I, I haven't really tried to paint people yet, um, but, but uh, I like the idea that my style of painting, which is a little loose, a little bit of a, more of a casual style and not so rigid, can be deployed to to uh, create a world, like a, I like the idea of creating a world with my work and each exhibition I do, that's what I, in the end, I'm in my own new world of artwork. 
and, and then it goes away, and then I'm uh, free, <laughs> and I'm a new, I have a new chance to try to learn something. Um, this is a tough painting here. This, this comes out of, I mix the, a, I, a lot, I like to start with a, a bad idea, not a good idea, because the good ideas always disappoint me when they don't work, but a bad idea, uh, a bad idea can only get better. A good idea can only get worse. So here I combine the, the pentagram, like the satanic sort of imagery and the anarchy symbol. I had these, I had a group of square canvases that I had bought maybe six or seven years ago. And I, I found the square to be very difficult for me. I, the equality of the shape and everything was difficult. I bought the canvases to make these star men. I wanted to make the star man. And I managed to get a few of them to work. Like this is the star man here. I like the idea of making this and add the eyes and and I also, the reason I don't paint people is because I want anybody, you, me, or anybody to be able to put themselves into the painting. I, I don't want to exclude people. I don't want to leave people, alienate people. Sometimes when I'm looking at a painting of a person, if it's a good artist, there's no problem. But if it's an artist that doesn't really have a grasp of what they're trying to say, I wonder why I'm looking at this specific person. Um, a great artist can do it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Maybe the next exhibition. Um, this, is an, this is another uh, combination of, I had the, I, I, all the shapes were made with, all the, I, use, I used a lot of stencils, I cut, I cut stencils for the border. This is how I would finish it. The way I stop working on a painting is either I put a border on it or I sign it, like I need something to stop working because Normally I work until the paintings get taken away from me. When, when I no longer have them, I'll work till, uh, I'll work till the last moment. And this little painting here is, uh, oh, another thing I tried to do with this show was work with acrylic paint uh, as opposed to oil. And I'm not a good acrylic painter. It, it looks too plastic. It doesn't have the oily, the oily surface that is, um, oil is more alive than the plastic is almost a, a, simul, a simulation of, of paint. Of, uh, it's, it looks like what it is to me, but I made these paintings in the winter when all the windows were closed. So the, the fumes of the oil were bothering me. So I tried to work in acrylic and only a few paintings and I'll point them out. I remained entirely in acrylic paint. And this is one of them. And with acrylic, you can add a lot of, acrylic is, is like make, it's, a, it's an illusion of, for myself, it's an illusion of painting. You can add texture, anything you want to appear in the paint, you add. So you want texture, you add this. You want it to be shiny, you add this. You want it to be matte, you know. You want it to be pearlescent, you add a little bit of this. And, and so, 
I left this painting because it, it seemed like a like the sky or and I liked the texture and I liked I, I can't recall what was under that but each painting has several paintings under it I, I like to work like that I like to make a painting and then destroy it and then build it again and then sometimes it's finished and sometimes it's destroyed um, but I, I don't abandon my paintings. I, I always try to save them because I, I love them. I love, I love my paintings and I'm alone a lot and the paintings become friends that I'm tired of, friends that or friends I'm happy to see and I, you know, being an artist involves a lot of time being alone. <laughs> it's hard to work when there's other people around for myself personally. Um, but even Warhol who always had a lot of people around him, in the end of the day it was him by himself working. Uh, I should say something about the title of the show, which was Living with Depression. And that, that title is only a title. I thought of it on one day, which I didn't feel good. Uh, I mean, we've all had issues of not feeling well on a certain day or a certain period of time. You don't, you feel low. And throughout my life, I've struggled with that. I think from thinking too much. And that was a tough title. And I talked to my family, I talked to my friends, and they said, no, don't use it. Don't use it, it's too personal. Which is why I used it, because I didn't I don't like to take the, I, I like to make a perpendicular situation, not make a situation like this. And like the, if the title was on the wall really big, it could be like a Lawrence Wiener or something. It, I like the titles to have some, some teeth um, for myself and also in the future, when I think back, I'll remember precisely that show. Um, only in the last few years, I've started thinking more that way, but I've, it's a little bit obnoxious. And I, I like that. I could have tied, titled the show, R The Red Paintings or something, which were, you know, whatever, but it made more sense to me to have a provocative title. And I feel that way at this point in my life, I feel that way in general. I would rather pr make, uh, provoke myself than just ease into, than to just ease into my life. I feel like being an artist is a luxury and if I'm not taking chances and, and, and making myself uncomfortable, that maybe I should, you know, stop. It's too much of a special thing to be able to do to make it easy. This is my perspective. It's not, it's not a fact. It's just the way I feel. Um, I'll show you uh, some other paintings. Hi. Hey, baby. Here's another star man, and we just, we were going to put the, oh yeah, let me wait a second. Um, I 
We were going to put the bridge painting here, but we decided to use this one because it seemed like a, a welcoming painting, a, a good painting to welcome people into the show. And it has my name and the sun and is an angry little star, but the, uh, I like this painting. Each painting that I make, too, is some, a painting that I personally want for myself. Like, if nobody else wants it, then I'll take it. I wouldn't make something that I don't want for myself. And a lot of times, that is the genesis of, of, of a painting. I think I want a painting like this in my house, and, and I make it. And then I make another one. But here I tried to s stop myself. But that's my personal, my personal love affair with painting. That's the, the genesis of it is I have a wall and I, or I want a, this painting in my, in my house, in my life. And I, because I'm an artist who produces work constantly, I, I can't keep everything. So I, I, I try to let the world have it. Um, and, and here in this room, I share some of the smaller paintings, more pictorial paintings. Um, let me give you a second. Like, these are singular ideas that I tried. I, I have this basket in my studio and I painted it. I, it's a green basket, an old green basket that I used for my paint. and. I painted it green, and this was one of the first paintings that I made red. This little one, I just, I painted over it and made it red. And it's a simple painting, but it told me that this is the way to go forward. Um, this is a, this was another, this was probably a subsequent painting of I said, okay, I'm going to make red paintings. Like, let me try again with a different subject I'm familiar with. These phases of the moon. This was, I did a collaboration with the fashion company Givenchy, and they, I made this for their clothing. They used it on their clothing and stuff, and they sent it back to me. So I, I used it to make that painting. Here's an old, this was an older cityscape. It was colorful and I, I turned it red. This is a fresh painting I made of a, two chickens fighting a cock fight. And this was made with a stencil. And I love this painting. I, I would like to keep that. This is the little bridge. This duck is not a real duck. It was made from a, a decoy, like a hunting that hunters use. They put these in a field and then they shoot everything that comes. And I, my neighbor in New York is an artist and she had a bunch of these in her studio and I, I took one and painted it. There's a, this is an acrylic, this is, this is an all acrylic, this is an American mailbox. It's my mailbox. I was like, I, I was getting the mail and I thought I should paint my, I should paint that mailbox. It had its mouth open and, and I painted it. And the Empire State Building's here. I had a studio in, on 38th Street in New York and, and I look up and this is what I always saw was the Empire State Building and I, like I, mentioned earlier, like I love the shape of New York. I love, 
I love the lines and and uh, I think it's a fun thing to to render, especially personally with my style. And lastly, this living with depression painting. I I did not want. I I would have preferred. I would have preferred to leave this out of the exhibition because I feel it's too. Too obvious. It it's a strange for me. It just seemed like maybe. I should leave it out, which is why it, I left it in. Because it. It, it makes me uncomfortable. Like the title, this, it makes me uncomfortable, which is a comforting feeling for me. When I feel too comfortable, I, I, think, I try to think of a way to, I mean, life is going fast and I wanna, I wanna, go over as many bumps as I can. I personally I don't feel like I'm living to go downhill. I want to I want to walk up and see more. And and part of doing that is is working hard and feeling pressure and and discomfort and then and, and then occasionally there's a bright light and things fall into place. And the type of artist I am, I have opportunities to do shows. And if I didn't have opportunities, if I was not an artist that was fortunate to have exhibitions in a gallery like this beautiful gallery, I would do it in a different way. I've always been a person who makes his own opportunities. My first shows were in restaurant, a restaurant I like that has nothing on the wall. I would ask, can I do a show in here? And they'd say yes. And I feel like no matter what you do, you can um, always expand it. <laughs> I don't think life is made personally. I mean, everyone's entitled to think or live how they want to, but my personal feeling is, is that, that, that you go through a tunnel and then you come into the light and then you go back in here in, in yourself and then you come into the light and sharing things with people is um, a luxury that I've learned to love and I'm so thankful to to be able to live a life like this. If I died tonight, I would die happy. Not <laughs> not like that. <laughs> but I this is just a if you don't feel good you can still live and be, there's always a, a, a corner you can go around and see more light. And I think it's up to all of us to create those opportunities with regards to whatever we do. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them. But if not, that's great. <laughs> um, I like trouble because there's an art nobody gets hurt. Nobody, nobody dies. It's, it's an intellectual exchange. So it makes sense to take chances. And maybe I didn't hear because I, I missed the beginning, but about the red, mm -hmm. the, did you decide it from the beginning? And how did you felt holding it through the whole making of the show? Well, at the beginning, it was exciting.
because I, was, I realized I was able to gather all these su subjects together and, and put them in a group with the red, uh, just like an outfit of, clo of clothing. Um, there's an element that ties it together and makes it work. Um, and as, as my time working on these paintings progressed, it began to get into my, it did become pain, it did become somewhat, I had spent too much time with red. It was on my fingernails and on my clothing and the whole studio became red and uh, it became time to let the paintings go. I feel like red is a provocative color. It signifies, uh, it's, it signifies everything from f fire to power to uh, excitement and and I'm curious to, s I made the paintings one at a time and then I put them all together like here and I, I yes, it was, it was challenging. The next exhibition I will not use any red. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put it all away because it, I've spent too much time with it. Like art's not like a relationship with a person. With a person you negotiate your relationship. Like we have an argument, but the next day we're friends. Like with art, you can just be like, get out of here and make a new, new thing. Um, I like to think of my paintings as, as poems. Like each one is a little poem and a lot of poems I feel like have the tone of red, you know? So cumulatively, I guess this show is a poem. Yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to share them with Paris. It's a magical city filled with very special people. Yes? I just have a quick one. Uh, as the show was about uh, challenging yourself and getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, what will be the next challenge they would like to kind of get comfortable with? Yeah, that's exactly why I made this show because that's exactly why I made this show because I always get asked that question, like, what are you gonna do next? I'm or, so sorry. No, 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 no. It's not like that. I always, they're like, what's your next series? What's your next series? What's your next series? And after 25 years of being a professional artist, I started to think, you know the cliche, you don't give people what they want, you give them what they didn't know they needed, or you don't never give people what they want, give them what, what they need. And I'm a person too, so after, when I, on the way home, I'll start thinking about that, and then I'll build a new world. Um, I think I'll still, I'll, I think I'll continue to experiment with painting from life and painting outside and I, for a few years I abandoned abstract painting to focus on other things. I, I would like to relearn how to be a good abstract painter. I think that's going well. Um, yeah, I've been making some sculptures, which I've learned everybody's making sculpture now. Um, 
the walls are all full. Um, and I love printmaking. I've, I love, I, I would like to restart my ceramic studio. I mean, I'm an artist. I, I make things. I don't know what they're going to be, but my, I, I, I work every day and it's, it's, it's an affliction. I have a hard time not working because that's, that's how my life has been. My mother was a school teacher and I had to be there a lot and there's paper and it's just how, it's how I think and it's how I process my life is through, through painting and making things. And fortunately, I've been able to build a world out of what I do and, and take pieces and, and, and there's a system where I can share it. <laughs> So, so um, yeah, I'm going to go forward. I, I can't answer your question precisely, but I, I would like to keep exploring making a myriad of, sub, of subjects and maybe even paint people if I could figure it out. I mean, the two-dimensional surface is a magical thing, like the fairness of painting, the equality that everybody has the same starting point, which is a white surface or whatever flat surface they have is, is such a good human exchange. When you see a good painting, it changes you a little inside. So. I'm going to try to make good paintings and change myself inside. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> and will you give uh, acrylics uh, an even chance, or you're kind of done with this? No, I'm not done Going with it. I, I bought too many. <laughs> I can't leave it alone. I, I bought so much. I have to figure that out. And I mean, Warhol was an acrylic painter. Um, Basquiat. Did Basquiat work in acrylic? Yeah, so you can make it, you can do a good job. It's just going to take some time without pressure. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Anything that provokes me, I, I, I will try to figure it out. Thank you so much. Oh, it's Thank my you. it's my pleasure.